Good afternoon, everybody. I am so thrilled to be here, and uh, as I'm sure you could tell by that intro, we're going to be talking about the power of stories, specifically the power of your personal stories, because we all, we all have those, right? And, and I've been teaching storytelling for over 12 years around the world, and I love it. I love understanding stories, unpacking the fundamentals and the principles behind them, the structures that bind them together over time. And if there's one thing that we all do, right, we all kind of collectively create, share, and protect stories. And it's like a single human common denominator, honestly. And we all know, too, that stories are one of the best ways to inspire, they're one of the best ways to inform, to create memory, emotion, and a great way to share a lesson. So as I was thinking about what specifically to cover with you guys today, because there's a lot we could talk about in the world of story. I have a very short period of time, though. So I thought, what if we focus on the power of short stories? So that's what I'm going to talk about. And we all have short stories, and we all got to use short stories all the time. I mean, especially in the, the professional world, right? If you think about it, very seldom do we get the opportunity to share a 20-minute, 30-minute, 40-minute answer to something. We get two minutes. We get three minutes. So you got to be really good at creating a compelling, inspiring, and memorable short story. And you can use your short stories in everything, ranging from, uh, I don't know, presenting a new product idea in Shark Tank, to a TED Talk, to interviews. And you can't be afraid to share your personal stories in an interview. I can't tell you how important those are, because short stories in an interview are the currency that gets exchanged. It's how they get to know you. It's how they get to know how you think about things like innovation, problem solving, collaboration. And you never know when you're going to need a good short story. And I'll give you a perfect example. So uh, in the early 90s, when I was an, an intern at P&G, uh, I came in early one morning. And I went to the elevator and hit the button. And the door opened up. And I immediately recognized the single person standing in that elevator. And I recognized them because I'd seen a big painting of them on one of the other floors. And it's because it was the CEO of the company at the time. Now, I will tell you that this particular CEO is one of the nicest people in the world. But all I knew as a college intern was, oh my gosh, this is the head of the biggest consumer products company in the world. Maybe I should catch the next one. Uh, but then what I'll tell you is we, he kind of made eye contact and kind of gave a nod. And I was like, oh, now he's seen me. So I got to get on now, right? So I get on the elevator. And I'm sitting there thinking, oh gosh, he's going to say something to me. I know he's going to ask me a question. I got to think of something clever. But I have no idea what he's going to ask me. And sure enough, as soon as the door shut, first thing he did was turn towards me and reach his hand out and introduce himself. And then he said, so what's your name? I said, oh, uh, my name's Shane Meeker, sir. He said, oh, Shane, it's great to meet you. So tell me, what are you working on? Why is it important to the company? <laughs> and I blacked out. I have no idea what I said. I have no idea to this day what I said, all right? And I know it wasn't memorable because I don't remember it, all right? And I, I'm pretty sure that I, I gave a, a definition, maybe, of what an industrial designer does, which is what my background is in. But that's not what he asked. He wanted a short story. He wanted me to inspire him about the project I was working on and why I was excited by it and, and the problem it was going to fix and why it was meaningful. I gave him a definition. Don't do that. Don't make that mistake. you got to always have an elevator pitch ready, right? An elevator pitch is basically a, a particular type of short story. And you know why it's called an elevator pitch, right? There's, there's actually two key reasons. The first one is the obvious one. It has to be short. But that's not the most important. The most important is what happens after you give it, which is there has to be some kind of reaction. Like you know your elevator pitch is good, that when the doors open and they have to get off, they put their hand over the door so that they can uh, ask you a question like, uh, you know, that's really interesting. Listen, i got to get off on this floor. Can you walk with me for two minutes? I want to ask you a couple things about that. Or they say something like, you know what, i got to get off here. Do you have a business card? I'd love to grab a coffee sometime and follow up. I mean, if the door is open and then they turn around and they say, well, hey, it was nice meeting you, and then walk off, then your pitch kind of bombed, honestly. And that's okay. Everyone in here is going to have to tell short stories. I'm going to tell you right now, some of them are going to be great, and some of them aren't. And you learn from them. You try it again. And pitches are really easy to test because of that. Short stories are really easy because they're, you know, they're short. So I want to give you a couple principles to think about, too, when it comes to short stories, especially as you start to, to build yours and tell them and share them. So the first thing that all short stories need, and actually all stories need this, quite frankly, is empathy. You have to create an empathetic connection with your audience. It can't be your story. It has to become theirs. 
And one of the best definitions of empathy I've ever seen is the ability to see with the eyes of another, to hear with the ears of another, and feel with the heart of another. And that's what you've got to create. Remember, whatever you're telling them, it didn't necessarily happen to them. So you've got to pull them into your story. And you've got to do that by setting it up. And that takes a lot of practice, I will tell you. But this is the secret to Hollywood, of course. This is what makes all of our favorite books and, and movies work, right? It's, it's why we can have empathy for a young boy going off to a, a wizarding school or a rat trying to learn to cook, right? I mean, that's how we do that. They pull us into those, and they create a character that we can dive into. And you need to get good at doing that. Now, the second thing that you need is you need a theme, and themes are great for short story organization. Themes are essentially a building block. It is what your story is truly about. It's like this focal point. It's the moral. It's the lesson. It's this guiding idea that you can then build your story around. And these are great as you start to practice your story, and you can use a theme if you know what your central idea is. You can start to ask yourself, well, do I need this part or do I not need this part? If whatever you're saying helps you build to that idea, then you keep it. If it does not, get rid of it. It could be get, become a distraction. And themes can take many forms, but usually they're, they're these pithy quotes that we all know, things like, um, uh, there's, you have nothing to fear but fear itself, which is a common one today, of course, and not to doubt. Or it could be something like, um, nothing worthwhile is easy. And I'll tell you one of my favorite themes, which is that sometimes the smallest things can have the biggest impact. And uh, recently, I was having to uh, speak at a conference where they asked every speaker to start off by sharing a quick short story about an important lesson that they've learned in life. It was actually it was really a really clever thing to do. I really enjoyed it. Because, you know, life is 10% of what happens to you and 90% of what you learn from it. And so there's a lot of great lessons that are really powerful short stories. So, and as a designer, I know that small things can have a big impact. I know that the smallest detail in a product experience can sometimes be the most memorable thing. But I don't want to tell that as my story. I want to tell something personal. So I decided to share the story about why I started playing guitar. And I've been playing guitar for most of my life, over 30 years. And I started playing guitar for one reason and one reason only, and it's because of a band called Poison, okay? Because when I was young, one Saturday, I got up, and I flipped on the TV, and I was watching MTV, and this music video came on for a song called Nothing But A Good Time, all right? And when I saw that song, and I saw that video, I said, my God, yes, this is what I want to do with my life. I want to be a rock and roll guitarist. So I immediately begged my mom for a guitar, and I started practicing, and me and this guitar were inseparable. And then I got into my first band, and it brought me such joy. I loved it. I loved it performing and playing rock songs in front of people. Now, what I didn't realize was there was someone watching me that whole time, and it was my little brother. And he saw how much fun Big Brother was having playing guitar, and guess what he wanted to do? He wanted to play guitar. So then he got a guitar, and he learned guitar, and became an awesome guitarist, I will tell you. And then he joined my band. And then when I went off to college, he started up a band and asked me to play in his band. So then I would drive home on weekends and play in his band. And then when I left college and went to PNG, I met some people that had a rock band and they asked if I would join that. I got in that band. And I've been in that for basically my entire career there. And my kids have grown up watching me play guitar in that band. And they would go to some of the gigs on you know, the weekends, especially when we were playing at festivals and things like that. And they saw how much fun dad was having and guess what they wanted to do? They wanted to learn to play guitar. So I taught all three of my boys to play guitar and now my middle son plays in the band with me. And this past summer, we were playing at a gig. We were both upstage jamming together. And I remember looking over at him and smiling and thinking to myself for a second, isn't it amazing what a three-minute music video can do? I mean, it not only gave me a lifelong hobby, but gave me the cherished moments of playing guitar with my brother and now with my son. And that's how I know that small things can have a big impact. And all of you have stories like that. You all have stories like that. A story not shared is a wasted story. Bring those stories to life. Start to organize your stories by themes. Practice empathy. And don't be afraid to share them. 
do tell your short stories. Thank you.